Welcome back. Super excited to move on with understanding what is the Apex programming language within the Salesforce platform. So we're going to take a look at in about five or six slides, very brief lecture, and then maybe a short demo so you'd actually see what the developer console looks like, where we can actually go ahead and create code for this Apex language. But primarily, let's jump right in first and try to understand what this language, this on-demand programming language is all about. So Apex code is an on-demand program code. So essentially for developers, and you can build next generation of business applications within Salesforce. Apex is an object-oriented programming. So if you're a existing developer of Java, Python, or any other language, C++, C Sharp, you would understand the concept of object-oriented programming. And I've placed several resources towards the end of the course so you can actually revise and refresh yourself on what object OOP concepts are all about. So Apex is, is basically an OOP language that allows developers to execute flow and transaction control statements on Salesforce servers in conjunction with calls to the API. So this entire programming language, Apex, is primarily run on the Salesforce servers. The syntax is very similar to Java. So if you're a Java programmer or a developer, for instance, and you understand the basic programming concepts of Java, Apex will be a breeze. Apex enables developers to add business logic to most system events, including button clicks, record updates, and Visual Force pages. What this means is that you can use the Apex programming language and create triggers. So for instance, let me give you an example. Let's say you add a new user to the Force platform, and as soon as you add a user or enter the first name, for instance, you can tie a trigger to that field so that as soon as you enter first name, something else happens, right? And an event occurs. So this is just a small example of what Apex can do. When to use Apex? The Salesforce pre-built applications provide powerful CRM functionality. Salesforce also provides the ability to customize that pre-built applications to fit your organization. So you can customize the pages, the Visual Force pages, and so on. But your organization may have complex business processes that may be unsupported by the out-of-the-box functionality, right? So that's where the Apex code comes into handy, where you can start to customize the platform based on your business logic or business processes so that your organization can become more efficient. And when this is the case, the Lightning platform includes a number of ways for the admins and developers to implement this custom functionality. And that's exactly when you would use Apex to perform that particular outcome. So for example, just a simple screenshot, you can add Apex to most system events. So here you can see the mileage detailed certain fields are displayed like date, mileage, name, contact, and address, and so on. So Apex programming language can essentially be used where the code could execute when a custom link or button is clicked. So that's just one example. Similarly, you get the idea, right? You can use the code that executes when a custom Visual Force extension is clicked, for instance, right on the map here. And that's the power of the Apex programming language. So as a language, it's a strongly typed language. What that means is that you must declare the data type so integer, string, enum, and so on. So you must declare the data type of the variable when you first refer to it. So Apex data types include, of course, basic types like integer, date, boolean, as well as more advanced types such as lists, maps, objects, and S objects. So just the important point here is that it's strongly typed language, which means that you must declare a data type. Then Apex as a language is also data manipulation language or DML calls you can make, such as insert, update, and delete. These are simple queries, right? Remember if you're heard of SQL or comfortable with the SQL side of things, you would understand what an insert query is, an update query is, a delete query is, and so on. 
So this is also part of Apex and also includes the built-in exception handling functionality. The two other query languages, the SOQL, which is the Salesforce Object Query Language, and the SOSL, which is the Salesforce Object Search Languages, are also part of the Apex Developer Console. So once you open up the Developer Console, and I'm going to demo that shortly, you can see that we can use SOQL or SOSL. Apex is really easy to use, so it's not that difficult, especially if you are a basic programmer or understand Java a little bit or any other object-oriented programming language. Apex is fairly straightforward. It's primarily based on familiar Java idioms, like I mentioned, such as variable, loops, expression syntax, blocks, conditional statements, arrays, and so on. So core concept, before I actually do a, a show you the actual developer console, once again, just a piece of code that you can see, we can declare a variable, right? You can perform an SQL query, SOQL query rather here. Control structure is available, the array list can be created, and the DML operations as well. So again, just to give you an idea of what the core concepts within the Apex programming language are. And once, of course, we get into the course, we'll do a lot of these things hands-on so you get comfortable and practice a lot with this code. Perfect, so this is what the developer console looks like. Let me go ahead and online and show you actually what we can do and how it looks like and just a basic flavor of where to go about in finding the developer console. Perfect, so right now I'm logged on to my Salesforce platform. This is the developer edition. So once you're on the home page here or the setup page or any page, notice on the top right there's a tool called setup. So you click on it, it gives you the option to open up a developer console. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the developer console option and this brings up another dialog box. And notice it's the browser based, right? So the entire console itself is browser based. So you can actually add code, create classes, create pages and whatnot, uh, create queries directly inside the developer console. But I'm also gonna demonstrate working with Eclipse IDE because working with developer console is okay if you're just creating a small trigger, basic syntax is fine, but as you grow into the code part of things and become more efficient, maybe you're working for an enterprise-wide large organization, this may not, in my experience, give you that particular speed or functionality. So I'm gonna talk more about Eclipse ID in later lectures once I get to it, but for right now, just understanding the concept of what the developer console looks like. Notice you have the query editor. We talked about the SOQL and the SOSL queries. That's where you can actually create the query and bring in data. You can also navigate to the file menu here. You can open up a new class, create a new class, create a new trigger and so on. You can open existing and so on. These are basic functionality. So as a homework, I'm gonna leave this to you. So explore the area of the developer console. If you have any questions, just post in the discussion area. I'll be happy to answer those, but I, I think I'm gonna assign that as a homework. So just explore this area, the developer console, what this is and how to go about working with it. So I hope this helps you get an understanding of the Apex programming language. It's strictly specific to the Salesforce platform where you can automate things for your organization. So with this, let's move to the next lesson.